Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you coming to visit. Uh, if you'd make sure to hit the like button before you leave, that helps out a great deal. Um, I have, uh, I'd, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. Uh, I think you'll find useful content here that has to do with metalsmithing. And um, I've recently added a uh, Buy Me a Coffee link up at the top of the right hand side of the YouTube main page. So if you are so inclined, you can contribute to my cause there. Uh, it's certainly not required though. Uh, I do appreciate comments and suggestions in the, in the comment section, so feel free to do that. Um, so today I thought we could do a, a pendant that uh, looks like a star. I, I kind of, you can see I'm kind of a science fiction-y uh, guy and uh, uh, a while back I made one of these when I was making a whole bunch of science fiction themed stuff. So um, I thought we could do that today. I'm going to put a little praseolite in it. So let's get started. So here's that praseolite I was talking about. Uh, Praseolite, if you don't know, is sometimes called green amethyst. And what they do is they take amethyst and they heat treat it, and sometimes it turns kind of this greenish, pale, real pale, uh, glassy green. It's kind of pretty. I like it. So uh, this one's kind of a cushion cut, and uh, we'll make a bezel setting for that first. Um, the materials I'm going to need, uh, as always, I'm using hard uh, silver solder. And uh, some people have been asking me why I use just that, and uh, I'll be doing a video, uh, the next video after this one, about that. Um, and uh, the flux I use, I get asked this a lot, is uh, Mighty Flux from Rio Grande. It's basically the same as Batterns self-pickling flux. Uh, and um, the materials, as far as silver that we're going to use, I'm going to be using some, I think it's number two, no, number seven triangle wire from Rio Grande. I don't know the gauges, the, the actual measurements on it. Uh, you can probably look that up on the Rio Grande site, but it's number seven. And uh, a little bit of 18 gauge round sterling. I use 3 16 inch bezel strip. Uh, this is uh, 20, 28 gauge, I think. Um, or it may be a piece of 26, I'm not sure, I can't always tell the difference, but I, I usually keep some around, uh, and sometimes I order the wrong right thing, but it all works pretty much the same. Uh, and that's about all we'll need for this particular one. So to start with, uh, I'm going to uh, make a bezel setting for this Prezulite here. And so making a bezel setting for a faceted stone is always easiest if you put it on its top. Uh, at least if it's got a flat top. Some don't have flat tops sometimes. So uh, we're in the process of setting up a Patreon. So if anybody is interested in uh, you know, putting forth ideas about what kind of perks you'd like to receive on the various tiers of the Patreon, I'm open to suggestions. We've got a rough idea fleshed out. I'll give you more details on that in the near future. people ask me why I make these into an angular shape uh, before I solder them. And it's because uh, for two reasons. One, it's easiest to file a perfect 90 degree angle so that when I put the ends straight onto each other, I don't have to worry about it being you know, not quite perfect. The other thing is uh, I generally uh, put a piece of solder on the outside of the bezel to prevent any kind of uh, mess on the inside where it might interfere with the stones sitting next to it. Um, so I do it on the outside and it creates a nice platform to set a piece of solder on there that's not constantly trying to slide off, which is sometimes the case when you leave it the shape of the stone. 
There's no real right or wrong about that. It's just kind of a, something I do and some people don't. <laughs> right after I told you it sits on there nicely then when I do that. Add it. <coughs> of course, then it slides right off that time. Never fails. It's a little bit snug, but I think I can make it work. I didn't notice before this one has a, what they call a briolet top. I think it's called a briolet top. Or it doesn't have one big table facet, it just has uh, multiple sparkly facets. Okay, so I have myself a little 18 gauge. Need very much. I'm really bad about moving out of frame, so I'm really trying to get better about that. <clears throat> Some days I'm better at shaping things than others. I'm not 100% sure today is one of those good days. I don't generally get too frustrated with things unless, uh, unless I have to do it like three times in a row. I start to get irritated. Nobody likes to redo things over and over again. We're pretty close, but I'm going to cut it a little so it's a little too big. And we'll snip out little pieces until it fits. We're supposed to get a cold spell this week. I believe I read that it was supposed to get down to negative 14. I hope wherever you're at it's warmer than that. When you're setting up a Patreon, you have to uh, give names to the different membership tiers, and there's uh, we're trying to come up with a good name for the the base membership. Uh, I thought minions would be good. I want to have minions, but uh, thought about using. Uh, Metal torturers. <laughs> that's what we all are, basically. What do you guys think? What should we call the base level tier membership? Close enough. Okay, blow the noise. Just a little hair more out of that one, I think. And then I think we'll be done with the Step that I'm creating in the bezel here. That fits pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to put the one that's a little bit looser on top because it may end up with a little gap in between the two ends. And uh, that would be hidden by the stone, so the tight one is going to go on the bottom, if that makes sense. I do want to make sure she 
get them laying nice and flat. Most times, uh, if you're making a bezel setting for a faceted stone, two levels like this, if you're doing it with some, just some little jumpers like I'm doing here, is generally enough unless it's a really deep stone. Every once in a while I have to do three. easiest way to solder these rings in on a little step bezel like I'm doing is just to set it right on top of some pieces of solder like that and then just heat it from the outside and I'll just kind of suck it right up in there when it goes next step is I usually take the bottom if it looks like there's plenty of solder all the way around the seam and everything, and just file it flat with the bastard file. It's gonna sit like that. Uh, now we gotta make the rays for the star. So I'm gonna set this to the side for a moment. I'm gonna use that. Uh, keep this over here so I can get an idea for proportions. I'm going to cut, uh, I think I'm going to do the rays from a star. I'm going to do some longer ones going about the same size, but long going up. Some little bit shorter ones to the side, and then some little mini ones between. So you get eight little rays. So let's, and I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily decide how long these are. <laughs> Let's go a little bit shorter than that. How, how long you make these all just kind of depends on how big of a star you want to make. That's a little more what I was thinking. So, these other ones, I'm going to make, make two that are significantly shorter going that way. I know these aren't straight yet or anything. I'm also going to file these two points. I think for the for the small ones that go in between, they're going to get so short that it's going to be hard for me to file them uh, to a taper. So I'm going to cut off a little more manageable piece of this. So I don't have this ring of it flopping around over here. And I think I'm going to straighten it. And then I'm individually going to taper these ones and then snip them off, taper, snip, like that. I could have done that with these ones too, but I kind of wanted to get a perspective on how long they were and stuff. So, and these I can just uh, cut to the length I want as I as I file them. So, let me straighten this out a little bit first. Triangle wire is not necessarily always perfectly an equilateral triangle, so I try to figure out which side is the downside and then go from there. So I might use a marker to color one side so I can keep my sides straight which one I'm working on. Of course I misplaced my marker. <clears throat> if I do it this way I might be making them too sharp. The previous one I did I didn't taper them at all. This one I was going to taper but I think that might be problematic. Uh, it might be easier to do a short taper at the end of each of them and uh, and make it not too too pointy. I'll have to try that and see how that works. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that instead. Just make it kind of a short taper at the end instead. It seems like that'll be a little less lethal, maybe. I'm going to stick it 
stab yourself in the throat with your pendant. <laughs> that would ruin your whole day. In hindsight, I think I would have left these attached if I knew I was going to do it this way. A lot easier to hold on to. One thing I did notice when I first started doing this, though, was that my hands got strong very quickly. Especially like grip and stuff like that. I could really hold on to things pretty well. <clears throat> I'm in my 50s now, so I'm starting to lose some of the strength I used to have. But what are you going to do? But just like before, I think I'm going to cut them pretty short once I file them. I do a lot of this filing in front of the camera so you can see the sort of filing I'm doing. But if you need to brace against something, that's a, of course a perfectly good good thing to do. I just hope that I don't cut one too short. See if I can find a flat spot on here somewhere. Flattish. Probably doesn't matter which way you, which order you do these in, but I usually do them in stages. I'm doing something like this. Never get things on straight, so it's my nemesis. One of the things I, uh, I tell people who are having trouble getting things to stay in one spot when they're getting ready to solder is the flux. You spray it on and then dry it. While it's drying, if you reposition it, yeah. <laughs> well, in theory. Sometimes the flux will sort of act like glue and keep it in place. Sometimes things are just going to be a booger.
I'm just trying to get things as straight as I can. Like I said, that's a, that's a challenge for me sometimes. The good thing is, solder is pretty forgiving if you can get to the point where you're able to uh, keep it a liquid state without um, without melting the silver underneath. Kind of mastered something there. That gives you a lot more options as far as fixing things if they're not quite straight. The previous one I did, I did a round uh, faceted um, clear quartz, I think I remember right. And that one looked real nice. I thought maybe a, a square stone would look kind of cool. So that's why I picked that crazy light. At least sort of a rounded square. I'm even making some adjustments on the go there. Trying to not uh, speed up the film during soldering so much because I understand that that's kind of what you're here to see. I just press for time sometimes, especially if I start babbling and I need to keep some of it in there. I think it's even relatively straight. Oh, this one's a little cockeyed to me. To my eye, that looks relatively straight. So from the back, that looks not too bad. Um, I think uh, to put, I'm just going to put a hidden bale behind one of these top ones. Uh, and to do that, I should have mentioned this, I'm going to use a little bit of a 12 gauge half round here. Um, but I think I even have a piece over here already for the last thing I did. I just wrapped it around the um, bale making pliers with the rounded side in. And I'm just going to um, use a piece of this here for the this is the piece left over from when I made the ammonite, which was the last big video. Okay, so you see you got kind of a, a half circle. I can file that nice and flat on the, on the back there and then pop it on here. But if I tried to do it while these are elevated like that, they're going to fall off. And so it's handy to have one of these things, which is a magnesia block. Because they have a soft surface, you can push things into it then, and so everything's sitting on the level surface then, or relatively level, and it uh, can't just fall anywhere, so you don't have anything elevated. <coughs> That's handy. In a lot of they do break down pretty fast. The easiest way to put him on here is probably to pick a little solder on either side and then I'll just uh, use my tweezers and just uh, mount it on the back there. Plopped a little bit of solder on the end of that. Same way right there. A little bit on there. Okay. 
now. <laughs> Hardest part is getting these positioned in the tweezers with one hand. If I'm smart, I just put the torch down. Let's go ahead and flex the back of this a little bit. super happy with the way that's soldered on there, but I can use the file to neaten it up so it looks uh, a little more symmetrical. So, but first I'm going to um, toss that in the pickle and let it clean up, and I think I'm going to come back in the morning and finish it. So, heat that up a little bit and let it pickle overnight. Okay. Morning, and got this ready to go pretty much. I think I might need to do a little bit of final filing on top here just to smooth it out. And remove some any burrs that are left from me filing earlier. Sometimes on a snug bezel it tries to sit in there crooked. So you gotta play with it till it sits in there nice. Okay, I think that's about right. <clears throat> so as you probably if you've watched my videos before, I don't use a burnishing tool or a bezel rocker or anything like that. I just use the flat side of my needle nose pliers here. I'm gonna Kind of go back and forth there in order to get this to not move at all. Go 90 or 180 degrees to start and then flip it 90 and go 180 degrees in order to just get it to tell it not move at all. Then I'll start doing the corners a little bit. Check to make sure nothing's shifted. Go back to the middle parts. Do a little bit steeper angle on them. <clears throat> so we'll go back to the corners again. Just going all the way around and making sure it's laid down on top of the stone there a little bit. And then I can go ahead and burnish it, which is I use the rounded outer part of the needle nose pliers here. There's a lot of uh, pressure when you're doing this. Alright, so I'm going to go polish that and then I'll bring back the final product and show you what it looks like. The final product came out pretty nice. Alright, that was the star pendant. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, make sure to hit the like button before you go. And, uh, and I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. But before you do, make sure to uh, check out at least one other video. Uh, my more recent ones are much more refined than my very beginning ones, but uh, the channel's growing. I have lots of content coming. I have uh, uh, generally two to three uh, regular sized videos that go out per week, and I plan to continue doing that for some time. So uh, I'd love to have you join my channel. That being said, thanks for visiting. Uh, feel free to leave comments, and uh, 
Take care. Happy silversmithing.